This is the second in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair and restore a PDP-1134A vintage computer. In the previous video we looked at the basic machine, tried to power it up and it was completely dead, it wouldn't uh, respond to any key presses and uh, all we had was the run light was on and the DC power light was on. Now unfortunately that is the state it normally goes to whenever it's just not working, it's uh, kind of a default um, backstop condition for it. And so it's not really very indicative of uh, where the problem might lie, um, but it wouldn't respond to any key presses at all. I removed most of the cards and it still wouldn't uh, do anything. And so it's, uh, it's clear that the console is not working. Now in the PDP-11 the a uh, console is a completely self-contained microprocessor system. I've removed most of it here, partly for cleaning, but also so I can access it more easily. I've cleaned it up, polished up the keys. You can see it's come up uh, very nice. The keys weren't very readable, but it's all come up very nice and clean. Uh, but uh, as I said, this is really a self-contained microprocessor system. It's based around an Intel 8008. It has onboard uh, RAM, it's got ROM, and um, all the uh, clocks, timers, uh, glue logic required to run as a completely self-contained microprocessor. And this should be capable of running even if the main PDP processor is not present. And in fact, if we look on the back of this and look at these particular pins here, I don't know if you can see this, but notice these are the grant lines for the backplane and notice that they are all passed directly through. In other words this board does not require permission from the main PDP CPU to run so it should run uh, even if the uh, main CPU is not there. Now you'll get uh, bus errors and that you do various things because um, it is expecting there to be something on the actual bus. Uh, but even so this should run, we should get something on the display um, but I tried that and it was showing absolutely nothing. Now before we dig any deeper into this, we'll just go back to the uh, main chassis, check the power supplies, make sure they're all present. It could of course just be that there's a power supply missing. So before we dig any deeper into this, we'll go and check the power supplies and make sure they're all behaving themselves. We're looking at the underside of the main chassis. I'm going to take some measurements of the supply voltages. These are all reference to ground. I don't have the uh, console fitted, it's all been disconnected. And uh, one thing I found is a couple of modifications been made to this. One is this white wire. It's labelled at the far end, follow it through, it snakes down here. It's labelled as plus 5 volts, so I'm going to remove that. And then there's this additional connector up here, this pokes out the top and uh, these uh, brown wires go through to a connector. I think it may have been a homebrew battery backup system, but I'm going to remove this. Uh, it's just plugged onto the uh, uh, wire wrap pin. So I'm going to take this out of the way. I'm going to remove um, this white wire, and then we'll measure the voltages and see what we've got and if they're all present. So I'll just get these out of the way. So as I said, this just went through to a connector. It wasn't connected to anything, so I'll remove that. And uh, because I don't have the console connected, I need some way to enable and power up the machine. So I've got a switch connected to the remote uh, control socket on the back of the uh, power supply, so I can power this up. Um, before we start, uh, one um, eagle-eyed viewer from the previous video uh, mentioned that one of the fans wasn't spinning or didn't appear to be spinning. It was absolutely correct, it wasn't. Uh, there are two huge fans on this, very noisy when it's running normally. One wasn't turning, but it was just um, this machine had not been powered up for decades and uh, that fan was just stuck. Um, it just needed a, a bit of gentle uh, persuasion to get it turning. And once it started spinning, it freed up nicely and now both, span, uh, both fans spin up freely. And now both fans spin up freely. Uh, the problem is, of course, it makes it much noisier. Um, but what we're going to do now is um, I'll power the machine up and we'll look at the various voltages. I do have the schematics and service information for this uh, machine. So uh, we've got the supplies. We should have minus 15, plus 15, 
Uh, they're repeated, um, but they are just jumpers on the motherboard, so it's not like they're separate supplies. And um, plus five again, and minus five, we've got the returns for those, and uh, plus 20 volts, and the main plus five volts. So we'll measure all those, see if they're present, and go from there. So I'm going to use my remote power switch to turn the machine on. It will, of course, make quite a bit of noise. And hopefully you can still hear me. But the first voltage we want to look at is the minus 15, and that should be present on this connection here. And indeed, hopefully you can see the meter, we have minus 15. The next one down is plus 15. Again, that's fine. I won't measure the next ones, they're just um, by virtue of some jumpers. Um, but the next one we're interested in is the 5 volts, which is here. It's a bit high, but then it's completely unloaded, so it's not that surprising. And then going all the way down, the next one we want to look at is plus 20, which is this one. And that's reading nothing at all, so that could be an issue. Although I don't think that rail's needed for the console to run. I'll look into that. And then finally we should have the main 5 volt rail at the bottom. So I power the machine back off so you can hear me. Okay, so all the main supplies seem to be there. The plus 20 volts uh, is not there. Now that is an optional... Um, regulator for the non-battery backed version of the machine and this does not have the battery backup option um, and even though it's, it's jumpered such that there's no battery backup option so uh, I think the 20 volts should be there but I need to look into that and find out the next thing I want to do is um, start looking at the console and its controller I believe that's where the fault lies and what I would normally do here is put the machine back the right way up, put a, um, a riser card in and plug that card on its own uh, into the uh, CPU backplane, which is, this is the top one that we're looking at. Um, but in this case, because I'm making a video and you won't be able to see much of what's going on, what I'm going to do is uh, take the backplane out. I'm going to split the machine where the power supply joins the main chassis so what I'm going to end up with is the main power supply block, the power distribution board, which is what all these plug into, and just this top um, backplane. And I'll take that up to the, um, the workshop and we'll look at it there. I'm also going to unplug and remove these other backplanes, just so they're not connected to the um, distribution board, because I want to take the distribution board with us. Uh, and then what we can do is use this as a test bed to test the other boards on. It's quite a nice way of doing it. This is similar to what I showed with the PDP-8 that I repaired fairly recently. It's easier to do this, spend 10 minutes taking this apart, get it onto the bench, you can access everything, rather than messing about uh, trying to uh, log this huge heavy case around and uh, you can't really get into it properly anyway. Uh, riser cards help, but then um, if you're trying to video something, then obviously that gets in the way. The only thing we need to make sure of is when we take the um, back planes out, we don't want to rest them on the wire wrap pins. So where the screws uh, mount, there are four screws, two at the front, two at the back. Um, I'm going to put some uh, studs on there, some uh, threaded studs to raise it off the bench so it's not going to be resting on the pins. So I'll get this into the workshop and we'll go from there. So this is how I have it set up now. I've removed the two fans. I don't, I've got it so lightly loaded that I don't really need those to be running. And uh, you won't be able to hear what I'm saying if those two things were blasting away there. Um, don't run it at uh, full power, of course, with the fans removed. Uh, but as it is now, this is gonna draw probably two amps. So um, it'll be fine. Um, I've got the uh, CPU backplane plugged into the power distribution block. You can see I haven't cleaned this yet. Um, haven't cleaned the back plane either. I just want to power it up and see if we're getting the same thing we were before, which is the DC on and the run LED showing up. Uh, we don't need these two cables there for uh, additional diagnostic signals. And uh, in this machine, they actually pass through another board. We'll come to that in a future video. 
Um, we've checked the 5 volt rail, the plus minus 15 and the minus 5 and they all seem to be intact. Um, so it is now safe hopefully to run this. It's been switched on anyway so it's not going to make a huge difference. I just want to see if we're back to what we had with this in the machine. So I can either now power this up using my remote switch um, but I also have the console uh, hooked up so I should be able to now power this up um, with this uh, power switch, this control switch. The supply is connected to the mains so I'll try and power it up and see what happens. Okay and it looks to be behaving itself in exactly the same way as it was before in as much as it's misbehaving. Uh, we've got the DC power LED illuminated and we also have the run LED illuminated but nothing else. So I strongly suspect that the, um, the this, this uh, console control interface is not running and uh, it will run like this, we'll get a bus error with the bus not being terminated but it should still start up um, but as you can see it's doing nothing at all and whatever combination of keys I try and press it just does nothing uh, and in this mode it should at least come to life but I'm sure you'll agree that having this set up like this makes life much easier and especially trying to video it I'll be able to show you the scope and uh, maybe spectrum analyzer depending on how far we have to go so in the next video we'll get into this we'll start going through the 8008 CPU system trying to figure out why it's not running hopefully get it going if we can get that running we can start to add more cards and see how far we can get before we encounter any other issues but um, this could be a problem uh, the 8008s are very rare quite expensive I do have a spare but um, I'm not going to put that in until I'm fairly certain I've uh, checked everything else uh, but certainly uh, it does seem fairly certain that our first step must be to get this card up and running. We could try putting in a, uh, a bootloader card and using a remote terminal uh, but really this has to be working in this machine so that's our next port of call.